This week, we take you to two of the newest restaurants in Crown Point. Now, each offers a totally different experience. We have the latest news, and I really can't wait to share it with you. But first, we have a look at what's to come. I'm Davia Chambers, and Let's Talk Tobago starts now. Budget estimates presented for the 2017 to 2018 fiscal period. Taxi Corp has a new place to call home, and later, we stop by the Scarborough Library to join in on the storytelling competition finals. These stories and more when Let's Talk Tobago continues. Stay with us. It's the land of tomorrow. Princess Margaret say, come to Vigo for holiday. Now the whole world say, come to Vigo for holiday. First up, Crafters Steakhouse and Grill. This restaurant is owned by Curtin Sarias and is fairly new to the food industry as it was established just three months ago. In our lead story this week, the Tobago House of Assembly presented the 2017 to 2018 budget estimates and Omodara Mills has the details on the priority areas. Here are the details. The Tobago House of Assembly's budget request is $4.91 billion for the 2017 to 2018 fiscal period. The estimates include $3.2 billion for recurrent expenditure, a reduction of $22 million from last year's request, and $1.71 billion for the development program, a reduction of $330.59 billion from last year's request. In his fifth budget presentation, Joel Jack, the Secretary for Finance and the Economy, outlined the recurrent budgetary allocation for each division. The Division of Health, Wellness and Family Development is set to receive the largest allocation followed by the Division of Infrastructure, Quarries and the Environment, then the Division of Education, Innovation and Energy. Education, Innovation and Energy, $498.1 million. Community Development, Enterprise Development and Labor, $110.9 million. Infrastructure, Quarries and the Environment, $539.5 million. Food Production, Forestry and Fisheries, $324.9 million. Health, Wellness and Family Development, $794.1 million. Mr. Jack also highlighted some of the programs that the Assembly plans to sustain for the next fiscal period. The Youth Development Program, $3 million. The School Feeding Program, $50 million. The Agricultural Incentive Program, $4 million. Information Technology Center, $20 million. The Study Park Enterprise Limited, $26 million. And Assistance to Sport Tourism Organizations, $2.6 million. Under the development program, the focus will be to strengthen the island's economy via diversification, tourism, and agriculture. Mr. Jack gave an overview of the estimates. The development program estimates are disaggregated as follows. Pre-investment, $5 million. Productive sectors, $20 million. Economic infrastructure, $738 million. Social infrastructure, $652 million. And multi-sectoral and other services, $294 million. In addition to the $4.91 billion request to the central government, the Assembly is requesting $77.2 million for the Unemployment Relief Program, URP, and $54 million for CPEP. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Crafters Steakhouse and Grill is located opposite the Crown Point Hotel. Mr. Sorayas established this restaurant because he saw the need to create a casual dining area for dining both outside and inside. Now, pay attention to this. Despite the $352 million reduction in the 2017 to 2018 budget, the Tobago House of Assembly is determined to make it a good year for the island's development. In this next report, we highlight the priority programs of the Tobago House of Assembly. 
$1.71 billion is the amount the Assembly has estimated for its 2017-2018 to development program. This came from the Secretary for Finance and the Economy, Joel Jack, in his fifth budget presentation. Diversification of the island's economy into areas such as light manufacturing continues to be in focus for the THE. Our development program estimates provide support for the Enterprise Development Company of Tobago, EITCOT, $85.4 million. The Scarborough Esplanade Phase II project, $15 million. Enterprise Development, $8 million. The Enterprise Development Grant Program, $9 million. The Business Incubator Program, $6 million. And the Venture Capital Equity Fund Limited, $2 million. The tourism sector is one of the island's primary industries. As such, the Assembly is making financial provisions for developments at places like Pigeon Point, Fort King George, and Englishman's Bay. The development program estimates caters for Phase 3 of the 4th King George Heritage Park project at a cost of $6.1 million. The upgrade of Sanctuary Resort, $50 million. Infrastructural works at Pigeon Point, $9.1 million. Upgrade works at Manta Lodge, $8.3 million. Construction of beach facilities at Englishman's Bay, $2 million. Construction of cruise ship berths, $2 million. Agricultural revitalization is another priority area on the Assembly's budgetary allocation for the next fiscal year. It's hoped that the plans can help to increase food security for the island. Our development program estimate caters for the establishment of farmers markets at Goldsboro and Blackrock Black Rock, at a cost of $3.5 million. The development of an agro park at the Friendship Estate at a cost of $10 million. An expanding agricultural access roads program at a cost of $80 million. The improvement to the Roxborough Market and Abattoir at a cost of $10 million. Other priority areas under the development program includes support for educational programs, further land development for public housing at Quarland, Adelphi and Adventure Phase 2, and continued expansion of road infrastructure works across the island. The Assembly's budget allocation for the next fiscal year is just over $4.91 billion. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Whether you're looking for grilled fish or barbecue half wrapped ribs, this restaurant has a diverse menu of both local and international cuisine to cater to all of your foodie habits. Now this. Members of the Tobago House of Assembly met recently to debate the budget estimates for the 2017 to 2018 fiscal period. Here are the details in this report. Coming out of the budget estimates for the next fiscal period, the Division of Health, Wellness and Family Development will receive the largest chunk, that is $794.1 million. Some of the division's plan include the establishment of a crematorium, the establishment of a laboratory service for food and water quality testing in Tobago, the establishment of a health and wellness center, and the establishment of a stroke and diabetes center, to name a few. The Executive Council also approved the development of a palliative care center and will engage in a PPP as well for cancer care on this island. Dr. Carrington says special attention will also be placed on the well-being of children. We are collaborating with the Child Protection Unit of the TTPS, the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, such that we could bring about greater awareness in terms of child abuse and the like. We are collaborating with the Children's Authority for the establishment of an assessment center. This assessment center we expect to be commissioned by September 2017 and that we will have child support centers established thereafter. She adds that focus will also be placed on primary health care. Efforts will include promoting physical activity and access to healthy foods. Turning to education, of the many plans of the next fiscal year, a teacher innovation center will be established. Meanwhile, the minority was concerned with the operation of the Studley Park Quarry. We need to invest 
in the Studley Park quarry. I say we, meaning Tobago House of Assembly. The quarry is not a place to play with. The Chief Secretary Kelvin Charles says a special purpose company will be set up under the purview of the THA to operate the quarry. He adds that there will be no retrenchment of workers and current employees will be redeployed. There shall be no retrenchment. There will be an incentive allowance given to all the workers currently working at the quarry. That workers currently at the quarry that have the requisite skill sets will be the first choice if they so desire to gain employment with the company. Joel Jack, the Secretary of Finance and the Economy, says all items for recurrent and development expenditure for fiscal 2018 have been approved, as well as all items under development, the Unemployment Relief Program and CPEP. I'm Keyshawn Wilson for Let's Talk Tobago. Coming up after the break, Tobago Taxi Corporation officially opens its new building. Stay tuned, Let's Talk Tobago will be right back. The location, the food, and the live music are some of the things that keep guests coming back to craft a steakhouse and grill. So the Taxi Corporation now has a new place to call home as their building, located in Canaan, was officially opened just a few days ago. Crystal George has all the details in this report. Have a look. After years of planning and working tirelessly, the Tobago Taxi Cab Commercial Building is finally opened. Located in Canaan, the new brightly colored building is attention grabbing. This project, the taxi cab commercial building that we are privileged to commission today, is the epitome of collaboration and cooperation of varied interests towards a common end. According to area representative and Secretary of Settlement, Urban Renewal and Public Utilities, Clarence Jacob, this commercial space will enhance the area, which is usually a buzz with activities. This building is really a blessing to the area of Canaan, Bonacord, and by extension, Crown Point. I know for future initiatives, this building will generate some form of employment and also entrepreneurs. According to Chief Secretary Kelvin Charles, despite the economy being up and down, the newly constructed commercial building is a great investment. You have, as an institution, taken a leap of faith because, as would have been indicated by the project manager, time was of the essence in respect of this particular initiative because you had, as it were, to ensure that you catch the wind. The Tobago Taxi Corporation Society has been in existence for over 46 years. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. We take you now to the ultimate dining experience at Overhang Dining and Entertainment. This establishment is owned by a young Tobagonian entrepreneur, Rohan McKay. Now, how much do you know about Tobago's history? History helps us to understand where we are and where we came from. In this next report, we join Keyshawn Wilson at the Scarborough Library for a workshop on Tobago's history. Here are the details. Tobago was called Uropena by the indigenous people. So that is another name that the island has. And the word means big snail. 
And when we talk about the indigenous people in Tobago, we are actually talking about several different groups over a period of time. Uh, when the Europeans came, the main constituents were the island Caribs, the group we now call the Kalinagos. History allows us to understand our past, which in turn allows us to understand and appreciate our present. This history lesson was shared by Dr. Rita Pemberton at a history lecture hosted by the National Trust of Trinidad and Tobago. She says the first settlement of the indigenous people occurred in the Bonacord Lagoon area and Milford. But it was the Saladoid group which introduced pottery making to the island. But how have we benefited from the indigenous people? For their food, they re raised, in addition to the hunting and so on, hunting and fishing, they raised food crops and fruit trees. But, and uh, food crops, the bitter and sweet cassava, yam and tanya, sweet potatoes, maize or corn. But a number of the fruits that we enjoy today, avocado, guava, mami, apple, papa, these were introduced by the indigenous people. Uh, the, the foods that they cooked included a very popular Guyanese dish, pepper pot. And Tobago had a very important role to play in trade. Trade moved from South America up through the islands of the Caribbean archipelago. So from the mainland came items and from the islands went items. Now from Tobago, conch shells were an important item of trade because they get the conchs from the reef and it was in demand down in the south and from the Amazonian area came the animal beads, especially frog-shaped beads, which were very popular for Azemis for the religion of the indigenous people. Dr. Pemberton says during the 17th century, there were 14 attempts to colonize Tobago. These were all repelled by the combined efforts of Tobago's indigenous people and other across the Caribbean. So there was no long-standing successful European settlement until the mid-17th century. In 1763, Tobago was declared a British possession. I'm Keyshawn Wilson for Let's Talk Tobago. The overhang has been in existence for over four years. Earlier this year, management decided to convert the popular lineman spot into a restaurant to provide customers with an affordable dining experience. Now, a reader can travel to many different places without actually leaving their home. Authorities found a way to ensure children have a fun, easy, and educational way to approach reading. Here are the details in this report. Children are more likely to read whatever piques their interests. That is why the authorities are adapting an early learning approach to reading. A collaborative effort among the Ministry of Education, NALIS, UNESCO, and the Republic Bank are ensuring that children of Trinidad and Tobago get an early start at literacy. And this program is making it more fun for the kids. This is the beginning of a new child-friendly systematic way of teaching children to become confident, fluent readers. It also helps them to develop a love for books and for reading. Jolly Phonics, as the name implies, is really learning letter songs in a systematic, fun way. Jolly Phonics is a new fun way that will help develop early literacy. Because there may be readers at other levels who may have some struggles. And I think this program will assist in alleviating some of the struggles of the weaker readers in the school. A reader lives a thousand lives before he dies. The man who never reads lives only one, end quote. Teachers play a very integral role that drives the educational system in society. Chief Secretary Mr. Kelvin Charles is applauding teachers who give their time and dedication. For children's learning squarely on the shoulders of the teachers, which means that it's the responsibility of teachers to motivate their students to learn. Happy is the child whose teacher is true to his or her calling. 
This program helps children build their own vocabulary and improve their understanding when they listen, which is vital as they start to read. Crack the egg and risk it with a fork. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. We have to take a break now, but when we return, we take you to the Scarborough Library for the Storytelling Competition Finals. You don't want to miss this. Don't go anywhere. Let's Talk Tobago. We'll be right back. What can customers expect at Overhang? A tasty menu that entails steak, shrimp, burgers, and the famous Overhang barbecue wings that you must try. Those are just a few of the mouth-watering dishes. You can also expect live entertainment four times a week. So primary school students from all over Tobago participated in the Tobago Library Services Storytelling Competition 2017. That's taking some creative and entertaining pieces. Storytelling is a big part of life in Tobago. It helps us to keep our traditions alive and entertains our imagination. And the Tobago Library Services hosted its annual storytelling competition to develop the performing arts and communications skills of students. This year, this year's competition saw an increase in participation at prelims and registered a total of 35 competitors of which 40 advanced to today's finals. I can tell you it was indeed prelims that felt like finals. The competition included preliminaries, which lasted for three days. Then it was on to the regional finals. It was amazing to see how much confidence was shown during the performances. Competitors from the Lansformy Methodist Primary School and the Scarborough Methodist Primary School emerged in the top three. Tanti Byrne was in St. James. She was in a big argument with a girl called Eileen. Now when you hear Tanti Byrne discussing politics, everybody does have to hush them out because Tanti Byrne quick, quick to get vexed. A Brahmin was walking along a road in India. He was thinking of all the things he could do in this life to help others, especially animals. When he came to an iron cage in which was a great tiger, the tiger cried out to him, Brother Brahman, Brother Brahman, have pity on me. Let me out of this cage for one moment. As the boys went out in the yard to play, their mother repeated, Boys, do not go near the bushes. It can be dangerous. Stay in our yard. It is safe here. The boys had heard her say that every time they went to play in the yard, they mockingly would sing the words before she spoke them. <laughs> the Tobago Library Services partnered with Republic Bank for the storytelling competition. I'm Kuhn DeFreitas for Let's Talk Tobago. The name of this establishment was influenced by the fact that it literally hangs over the road. The overhang encourages customers to casually dine without breaking the bank. Connecting people to nature is the theme reflected for World Environment Day 2017. To commemorate this event, the Scarborough Library hosted a lecture to disseminate information on one of the rarest species of trees in Tobago. Currently Freitas has this report. Have a look. 
Connecting people to nature is the theme recognized by the United Nations for World Environment Day 2017. And the African baobab tree took the limelight as the environment came into focus. This species originated from West Africa and can also be found in the following countries. Botswana, Nam Namibia, Mozambique and Zimbabwe. But they've added Tanzania, they've added to those Asia, they've added Sudan, they've added a few other places apart from Africa, but uh, the African continent, this particular species that we speak of, it is native to there. The African baobab tree has many benefits. The pulp in the seed is used to make ice cream in Africa. It's also used for making a local drink called gubdi, and it's high in vitamin C. But how did the baobab tree get to Tobago? Apparently, one of the ways it came here, one of the ways it came here, it is by moving uh, in this slave trade business. And there are two ways connected with that. One of them I'm not certain about. Some people say through the slaves, slave brought them here, and the other one says through the the um, slave traders. If you ask me my opinion, the lesser of the two would be the slaves. And the, most that is mo the one that is most highly would be the slave traders. Currently, there are 10 known baobab trees in Tobago. One at Coco Cafe in Crown Point. There are three in Scarborough at the Botanic Garden, the Scarborough Methodist Church uptown, and the Good News Seventh-day Adventist Church downtown one in Plymouth, and another in Moriah. The African baobab tree is also known as the Guinea tamarind because of its acidity. And why is it called Guinea tamarind? One, because um, they say the seed, the, the word baobab came about uh, uh, Arabic uh, word as well as a word used in Europe, which means many seeds. Uh, they also say that it's called tamarind because the acidity, just like the other tamarind that we know. And Guinea, because it comes from Northwest Africa, where you had Guinea at that time. The African baobab is a rare species that can live from five to 6,000 years. I'm Kuhn De Freitas for Let's Talk Tobago. It's now time to have your say, the segment of our program where we hear what you, the viewers, have to say. Today we're asking, how can you improve your productivity at work? While you think about it, we'll have a look at who had their say this week. For anyone to improve their productivity at work, it would mean that their literacy skills have to be high. They have to have very good communication skills, right, so that they can understand what is being asked of them, and they can do it in the best way possible. You must be punctual, and when you are there, you must be qualified for the job you are doing. For workers, giving them a clear line of sight as to their objectives and planning their time efficiently, giving them the right resources and monitoring and supervising. By one, being punctual, doing your job the right way and staying off your phone. There must be good supervision. You have to make sure people do the work that is assigned to them. We have too many people just coming to work and wasting government time and wasting time on the people's job and therefore there's no improvement of productivity. We close yet another edition of Let's Talk Tobago and as always we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program and be sure to visit our website, like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and a very productive week. We close now with a montage of the opening of Schools Basketball 2017. Enjoy. Thank you.